so I just wanted to get into some of the latest developments um, for where our language is at and what's going on. So the bipartisan infrastructure framework proposed by some senators does not assure electric cooperatives can rapidly transition to clean energy without more debt. So similar to what Eric was saying earlier, that right now this really isn't a priority. Uh, this is why we're bringing folks together here to try and get some momentum around this and, and make sure our members of Congress really understand uh, how important it's going to be to have rural electric cooperatives in any infrastructure plan that we're seeing. So Democrats in the Senate will soon determine through the Budget Committee how much the Agriculture Committee can invest in infrastructure over several years. Uh, then the Agriculture Committee subcommittee on rural development and energy will decide how much to invest in rural electric cooperatives specifically. So even within uh, the budget process, there's a lot of engagement that we can do and can use help with to make sure that this is done in a way that really prioritizes rural interests. And then from that step, we'll be having the majority of the House uh, deciding whether to agree or if they'll need to reconcile. And that's going to be done within the next 10 weeks. So this is really where the action's stepping up. Uh, this is actual copy of the discussion draft. We now have bill language that has been finalized. Uh, this is thanks to Representative Cory Bush in my home state of Missouri. So we're very thankful for their support uh, in this effort. So as we've pre previously discussed, here's where we're asking for 100 billion. It would go as part of the uh, federally insured uh, hardship loan program. And while we're here, I just wanted to highlight some of the things that could be done with this program that would be covered. So we've really talked about the retirement piece quite a bit. So I just want to highlight what the reinvestments could look like. So uh, the first point that we're looking at are energy efficiency upgrades. We got to hear a great story already today about pays um, and how that could be used to help folks. So that's something we're really wanting to see as part of this program is the use of energy efficiency and specifically tariffed on bill investments. We also would like to see renewable energy installations that are gonna help reduce utility bills for rate payers, which would be member owners. We'd also like to see energy storage incentivized to help reduce bills for member owners. We'd also like to see broadband be more accessible, especially for parts of the country where co-ops aren't taking that action and aren't taking uh, the initiative without additional assistance to invest in broadband. And we'd also like to prioritize economic support, training and development for workers and communities that are affected by job losses from the closure of fossil fuel fired power plants. And we'd also like to have an inclusion of bill relief and efficiency investments for all. Uh, so this is where we can really use your help. So here we have the Senate Ag Committee they're really going to be the decision makers uh, for this language and what we can get done here, uh, chaired by Senator Sabanow. So if you have any con constituents um, on your lists that are served by any of these senators, or if you yourself are a constituent, it would be really helpful if you could reach out to them in support of, of what we're pushing here. So similarly, here looking at Tina Smith, um, she is uh, the chair of the Senate Ag Subcommittee on Rural Development and Energy. So really any outreach to Tina Smith or again, majority members of that committee would be very helpful. And on the House side, uh, the Subcommittee on Energy and uh, Credit, all these Democratic members would be great folks to target and, and asking to support Rural Power Coalition and what we're asking for here. Thanks.